Hello World Wide Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And it's that time of the year again, that age-old holiday passed down to us for generations. Of course, I'm talking about May the 4th. Star Wars Day! I hope this one doesn't end up like so many others and wind up commercialized. It's that special time of year that everyone gets together to talk about Star Wars because, uh, uh, uh May the 4th be with you! And there are plenty of Star Wars movies out there that I have yet to review. Because your opinion on space fantasy anymore seems to be a barometer for determining whether or not you need to be re-educated. Fortunately for folks like me, there are movies like Battle Star Wars, which is not Star Wars, has nothing to do with Star Wars, but has Star Wars in the name, because it comes from our good friends at the Asylum. You seen Star Wars? Great! It's like that, but thrown into a blender, and without too much concern for how the final product turns out. Which some might say is the state of the series itself at this point, but anyway, let's take a look at Battle Star Wars. And see just what the heck the asylum has cooked up for us today. We open up with text exposition! Not scrolling. This is an original work, after all. Seems this coalition runs the joint and was peaceful until their new leader wanted power! Which he has, but don't think about it too much. There's a rebellion now who rebel by fleeing to a planet. Haven! Anyway, this escape is being led by Corbion Race Charm, uh, played by Luke Fatrusso. Attention, vessel. You are in violation of coalition regulation. What the? Further transgression will be considered a declaration of war. Well, that's a hell of an escalation from a traffic ticket. This coalition ship boards uh, next to instantly, introducing our not-Jedi, the Paladin, Dens, played by Benedict Sebastian. And yes, that is a motherfucking Halo plasma sword, now in foam cast iron. Looks better than his armor, at least. But having this bad cosplay board is too much for Ajax. We need your ship. You've got a ship. Use it. I wasn't part of the plan, Ajax. Ajax! Abandoning Corbrine in his time of need. Cabrain! Cabrin! Cabron! A squirrel, I'll just use the actor's name, Luke. Dens demands that Luke comply with the Coalition orders. All the while, his Halo sword keeps changing from pointing forward to pointing backward. And Luke tries to explain to him that the Coalition are the baddies. It doesn't matter that the Jedi serve the Republic, it's a motherfucking Empire now, and evil! We no longer answer to the Coalition of Planets. Jason! <laughs> God damn it, silencers in the future are something else. So Luke's big rebel agenda is to just say fuck it and leave, as there is a secret planet right here that the Coalition doesn't know about! It's impossible. The Coalition has no record of a planet in this sector. Well, if it's not in the records, then it doesn't exist. Luke's telling Dens all this because he trusts the guy. He's a paladin! Sure, the Coalition's intentions in space are about as evil as a leprechaun's, but surely a Walmart Jedi can recognize slaughtering thousands of innocent people isn't the right thing to do? If they find us, they'll kill us. What are you doing? Long range connection established. I just gotta make sure they find you. Oh yeah, that was a that was a lovely speech, by the way. Right and wrong, good and evil, real great. But uh, you know who signs my paychecks, right? Dance was calling back like, hey, couldn't negotiate terms of surrender, but the coalition's like, nah. It'd be far more in character for us to just wipe them out, all of them. What's happening? They're blowing the engines. Didn't even give us time to evacuate. No. I told you. They won't. They, they wouldn't. It's impossible. Now, maybe it's not really fair to say that the Paladins are just stand-ins for the Jedi. They are actually pretty different. I mean, for one thing, the, the Paladins don't have any of the Jedi's magical powers or critical thinking skills. Realizing the horrible truth that the truth turned out to be the truth, Den starts a self-destruct sequence so that maybe they can get as many people to safety as possible instead of just getting blown the fuck out in a couple of seconds. With that, BOOM! Thousands of people are dead! So let's skip ahead two years to find Luke is still hard at work with that rebellion, meeting up with some more space refugees, this time in a ship whose captain was supposed to help him back in the opening. Ajax. Played by Amy Stolt, whose filmography includes such work as Untold Stories of the ER and Sex Sent Me to the ER. I guess I told the story then. Seems that Luke has been leaving little trinkets around the galaxy as a means to lead people to Haven, though he's confident Haven's location is still safe because they can only actually lead you to Luke so that he can escort you to the planet. Also, here's our big burly crewmate archetype. 2,756 Novaks perished 
by these hands for this Novak to stand before you today. Novak, played by Ross Forte. He doesn't talk too much. He is a breed of clone super soldiers who are really good at two things, killing people and following orders. Incidentally, I find him to be one of the most interesting characters on set. As such, we're going to leave them for now and jump to the Space Princess, Astera, played by Alison Gorsk, and her holographic friend, Helper, played by Elisa Filoramo. First thing Astera does is give Helper free will. That way, it's her choice if she wants to join Astera or not for this dangerous adventure. I go wherever you go. <laughs> Do you mean that? Is that just how you're programmed? Oh. Well, I hope you didn't spend too much time and energy figuring out how to give her free will, because it looks like it was all wasted. Helper also helps establish that Astera's mother is not alive today. Cool, let's move on to our big bad bastards for this rodeo. Zealous, played by Kenyon Prince, and Lord Malister, played by Justin Birdie. They're searching for Luke, but Zealous questions why they're wasting time searching a barren sector. Malister points out it's not just that criminal they're trusting here, they have more tricks up their sleeve. Speaking of criminals, hey, Ajax is a pirate and has a nice ship they could have used. Would have been nice, have an industrial class freighter all these years. You did all right without it. There'd be a lot more Haven on Haven by now. I get it. Jeez, you bug out, a few thousand people die, and nobody will let you live that down. That gets them to argue about who can't trust who here. Why would she come back? Why can't he forgive her for fleeing someone who kills pirates when he never bothered to mention the sudden appearance of a paladin was still everything going according to his personal secret plan? How was I supposed to know he was on our side if you didn't tell me? Uh, to be fair, Luke could have told you that all he wanted to, and I'm pretty sure the paladin would still have been trying to kill you. I mean, Luke's not exactly the greatest judge of character. On that note, he points out that the little Haven beacons are made of mana, a special unobtainium found only on Haven that is like the ditto of minerals, able to become literally anything. Also conveniently enough, it emits plot waves, rendering the planet completely invisible to sensors, and the naked eye apparently, unless you know the right frequency to unwave the waves. Welcome to Haven. Got a whole damn galaxy for a little space adventure. We only ever go to one planet, and this is what you give us. Earth. But what's this? It turns out that Luke could not trust Ajax, as she was working for the Coalition! Do you realize what you've just done? Made the movie a hell of a lot more interesting. Come on, this is Battlestar Wars, not Kumbaya Star Drum Circle. Lord Malastar is like, got the rebels? Cool, call my daughter. I gotta show her this shit. But Astero distracts Zealous with a decoy hollow clone while she and Helper flee in their own escape pod. Ah oh, well, nothing to do now, I guess, but broadcast impotent threats down to Haven for all to see. There is no, no corner, corner of the, of the galaxy, galaxy that, that the arms, arms of the, the coalition, coalition cannot, cannot reach. reach. <sighs> so many potential settings on Earth for your fantasy space adventure. <laughs> And the one location you pick is California. After he's done wagging his space stick, he establishes a blockade. That way there's no chance this movie will have any more locations. That escape pod, though, fits snugly into Ajax's docking bay, allowing Astera and Helper to get aboard. Astera walks in like, hey, Ajax, great work, love what you do. Ah, uh, yeah, well, you, you could just hand Luke over to me, and I'll bring him to my father, and you get paid. Ajax doesn't trust this news, but Astera picks up her walkie tic tacs. I will not be questioned by a lawless pirate. Tell this self serving captain she can turn over Commander Corbin, or she can die with the rest of the criminals. Hmm, Malastar doesn't really seem like the hardest character to roleplay. It's kind of like a dark side run in Knights of the Old Republic. No matter what the question is, the answer is murder. That's convincing enough, so as soon as Ajax slips out of frame, Astera jumps into action, get Luke free, and shout at him to get the rebellion in gear! Launch your fleet, activate your defenses, fight back. Haven doesn't really have a fleet. As less of a rebellion against an evil empire and more just a tax evasion. So the entire Rebel Alliance are like farmers, and Luke's never heard of a farmer who has ever been semi-decent at fighting. But you know who is? A paladin, and he just so happens to have one on ice nearby. Of course, historically, they've been very strongly aligned with the Coalition, but Luke says not to worry. Oh, you could be handing my father the planet if this guy decides to turn you in. He won't. Trust me. 
Now, yeah, Luke, uh, you really have not had very good luck with these things so far. But they have to find a ship in order to reach the guy. That escape pod ship uh, thing, blah, 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 that doesn't count anymore. While they look for a way out, Ajax is having to deal with the fact that, hey, that blockade has kind of prevented her from leaving, which is more than a little annoying considering her job is done. Check with your daughter. With my... What did you say? When was this? Where? But, oh, darn it, she learned that just late enough that they managed to get away. Man, that's convenient. Stealing a handy dandy spare ship, we quickly establish that Helper can just teleport around at will to mess with the hangar doors. There's no way we'll make it past that blockade with normal thrusters. We're gonna have to jump us at delight speed. That way if we die, at least it'll be quick. One jump to light speed later, and fortunately Helper teleports back in, presumably faster than the speed of light. With that, they have reached the Paladin's cryogenic cargo container. Thawing him out, they finally have their one weapon against the Coalition. I've synced with Coalition Command. Rest assured, you will be with your father in a moment. Oh, Jesus, Luke! Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! Astera does her best to explain that it doesn't matter what the Paladin Codes are, there will be no negotiations and no peace! Lord Malister is the bad guy and just really likes killing people! He still doesn't believe them, so they must run! Luke escapes in the pod while Astera remains. Not a moment too soon as the Paladin's signal is picked up. I thought you dealt with the last of them. So did I. It's an asylum movie. Of course Order 66 was executed half-assed. The Coalition contacts Dens, though, and tests the waters to see if he's still loyal to the Coalition. Can't really find out with Astera talking for him, telling Daddy to go fuck himself sideways. So Lord Malister's like, okay, let's keep attacking the Rebels, and you there, go get my daughter back. Do whatever you want with the Paladin. He's not really that important of a character anyway. So Zealous shoots their ship! Well, they can work on repairs and figuring out the next course of action while we hop on back with Luke. His escape pod came down in California. Come on, Ajax. You could do better than that. You thought to add a little dialogue there to claim that these two random goons we never saw before were totally a couple of Ajax's pirates out to get him. But you still, still, I haven't bothered to make sounds for the gun. The, the, the gun, honestly, just make no sound. Nice try, Ajax. Maybe remember to like the video next time and subscribe to Decker Shadow. While Luke continues killing random locals and saying they were probably pirates, we jump back over to Astera. Denz and her have come down to California as well. But what's this? Zealous has come to SoCal as well. Astera fears he will annihilate the rebel outpost, so she runs ahead to warn them. Everybody out! It's your only chance! Line? Mock calling in a coalition kill crew gets them to scatter real quick. That way we don't gotta pay the extras all that much. Using the computer, she discerns what location her character is supposed to head to next. Well, in the meantime, Luke is trying to escape with the rebels. But they all just say fuck it and leave. And he ends up captured by the Novak! While things are confusing as all hell, let's have Zealous use his handy-dandy teleportation powers to end up face-to-face -face with Dens. Not to worry, Astera can run in and be like, Nah, nah, can't kill me. My father would be really mad at you. Eh, yeah, he's sure he'll understand. Overcome with grief after witnessing the murder of his only daughter, I had to strike down the paladin responsible. And he's also sure the guy's just kind of dumb, as he's made no attempts to hide the fact that he really, really wants to kill everyone. He's about as subtle about it as Lord Malister himself. So they must fight! Hey, the guns make sound now! In any case, this is a tough fight, and once they are separated, Astera calls in help from Helper. Hey, they have teleporting powers now, too. I guess as long as it's convenient to the plot. Also, real quick, that rebel base before wasn't THE rebel base, just A rebel base. And that's the location that Astera got from the computer, so that's where they're headed. Later, first gotta run right the fuck into Ajax! Conveniently enough, she's got Luke, so they're kinda regrouped? Ajax demands their surrender, and Denz is like, fuck it, their pirates can't trust them? But Astera believes that they can convince Ajax to side with them. They are obviously the good guys in this story! I know we don't have anything to negotiate with, but I'm telling you, my father's not just going to let you go free. <laughs> Hell of an offer. I receive your assistance in fighting the galaxy's largest army, which will probably kill us. You receive 
Nothing. As such, Ajax just tosses him in the brig. Dens is like, well, that was a big fucking waste of time. How about I rip this shit apart with my awesome power and super weapons? But Astaire is like, no, 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 give it time. Still got half the movie left to go. Besides, we got this handy dandy holographic lady to try and save Luke with. In the meantime, Ajax can contact the Lord, get yelled at for doing a good job, and drag the princess off at pistol point. Ah, oh, well, she could try negotiating again. You can make a difference if you decide to work with us. Truth is, I don't care. Always looking out for number one, that's like her only character trait. So never mind helping, Luke Astaire secretly tells Hepper to help Denz instead. She gets him his weapons, and he begins kicking pirate ass. But then... 2,756 Novaks perished by these hands for this Novak to stand before you today. Hmm. I know you don't have to pay them as much if they don't speak, but I really don't think that there's a loophole where you get to pay them less if they just say the same things over and over again. Novak refuses to let him pass, so Dan's whoops that motherfucking ass, easily passing. Also, Helper is still helping out in general, hijacking a pirate fighter to fly into another pirate fighter. This allows her to slip in and destabilize Ajax's control long enough for this to happen. I'm sure I can find Haven without you. Good luck. Uh. Um, According to an earlier scene, there were a couple of people on Haven that were totally your goons, so, uh, you mean to tell me that wasn't accurate? The Paladin, though? Well, uh, he's still on the big ship, which promptly explodes! Whoops. Oh, well, only broke in half, really, allowing the Coalition to swoop in and search. But they only found Novak, and he's not one to break loyalty from his master, Ajax. He offers a deal to Lord Malister instead. Trial by combat. Sounds like fun. Name this one your champion, so I may bring an end to his days. Dude, after getting your ass royally handed to you by a paladin, maybe don't pick a fight with the paladin killer over there. Realizing with Novak still under Ajax's command, Ajax must still be alive, and getting nothing from him over the location of Ajax, the paladin, Luke, or Astera. That is one you are owed! Oh god damn it, it's true. In space, no one can hear shit. So they're getting nowhere, but Astera and friends have made it to the rebel base. Ajax is still out cold. That was one hell of a punch. Anyway, Luke shows off, hey, here's that mana stuff we already established. It does all that magical shit we already covered, but look, it's pretty. This has got to count as a revelation somewhere. Now it's time to strategize. They got like a uh, few ships, maybe assault the Star Destroyer <coughs> uh, warship. The people who came to Haven, they're not fighters. Yes, we know, it's a planet full of incompetent assholes, but it's worked out for Earth so far, so hop to it! So we're going with the Nike War strategy. Just do it! Never mind that for now. Hey, this doohickey just so happens to play Records of Traveler's Tokens, which Astera just so happens to have among her possessions, and it just so happens to hold a message from her dead mother! She's all like, hey, droid, uh, um, hologram lady, uh, keep my daughter safe. I'm in the process of being horribly murdered, but... You know, gotta do that sometimes to protect the planet, so try and keep Haven's secret from your dad, okay? Uh, now that that's over with, Zealousum calls in HD to show them why they need to surrender. That's my ship! That's my ship! Aw oh, man! It's gonna take like 20 minutes to render another one! Also, hey, the Paladin learned instant transmission in the interim, dropping down right there next to Zealous, on that same patch of Californian dirt road. But he's not quite able to fight, so Zealous just has the Coalition start launching After Effects at the Rebels. So while that goes on, Zealous force teleports Astera and Luke back over to Lord Malister, and the Paladin is like, hey, I'm still standing. Okay, somebody did watch this movie before they sent out the Master Print, didn't they? At least the punching has some nice, heavy sounds associated with it. Before Zealous finishes him off, though, Lord Malister pops in and tractor beams his ass to the ground. Bastard! What, are you gonna kill me like you killed her too? And Zealous knows the force! He just fucking starts force choking a stare over there! I mean, in the home stretch of the movie, and we're establishing that he knows the force, this sounds like it's something that would have been really handy a lot earlier. Thing is, Zealous doesn't like Astera's tone, saying that he killed her mother. He makes it very clear that someone else close to her is responsible for that one. Anyway, back with Big Bad Malister, he's like, Luke, good to see ya. Listen, I'm gonna kill, like, everyone on the planet unless you surrender. Faced with that option, Luke makes the hard choice to do just that. 
But wait, Lord Malister is an asshole, so he still doesn't care how many people will die as he forcefully tractor beams the monocore out of the planet immediately anyway. But wait, Dens can fight off that tractor beam all of a sudden and teleport into the ship. Still exhausted. Put him back in the ship. Make sure that he's in hypersleep. Oh, and make sure he has a view. Give him a snack and be sure to tuck him in with his plushy Novak. So while they freeze Dens, Luke is tossed in a cell with Novak and spare alien dude, and the Coalition tears into the planet. The Lord is like, okay, you can just go to your room now, and Estera calls Helper to perform a little more subterfuge. But back on the Paladin's ship... Ajax is just waking up? That's a hell of a punch. She must have been watching the movie in her sleep as absolutely no one needs to catch her up on things. The pirate-killing paladin is her friend, the Coalition is her enemy, and she needs to help save Haven! Astera also busts the rest of the characters out of the brig, which you'd think someone would have checked to make sure she didn't do. Um, oh well, time to blow up, but never mind! Zealous got those Force powers and he's not gonna let these two ruin their evil plans! Grabbing the bomb before Astera grabs his gun and shoots him into space! Okay, job done. Better go confront Dad about the whole murdered my mother thing he seems to have done. She had an option. She chose her path. I didn't want to do it, but she forced my hand! What is... Am I getting invested in an asylum film? That's all she had to hear. Killing thousands of people across the galaxy, sure, but Mom? That's just too much. Anyway, time for the big Rebel vs. Coalition space battle! They're out there, trying to take out the beam, even spare alien dude. How to disable the beam? Simple! Pilot the pirate ship like an RC car into the Coalition warship, killing them all, including Astera's asshole of a dad! But the core is not going back down to the planet. Only thing to do is to use that ship to force the core down, killing whoever is chosen to pilot it. Even the hologram. Honor holds the last copy of my programming. Oh, Helper, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot that you'll... You'll die. Oh, shit! I did just kill you, didn't I? <sighs> my bad? So while everyone else gets to safety, Helper does her last bit of helping by blowing the fuck up! Smacking that monocle right back down into Southern California. Therefore, happy ending! The Rebellion actually rebelled for once and won. Most of the important characters are alive, and they now have to band together, knowing that the Coalition will surely retaliate. And Zealous is still alive! He was a robot all along! Or he just has a really spiffy pair of contacts. I'm, I'm not sure. But. Anyway, that was Battle Star Wars. And especially considering a lot of the Asylum movies I've been seeing lately have been absolute trash, uh, this was surprisingly entertaining. I mean, it's not a great movie or anything like that, but this genre is weirdly almost a perfect fit for the Asylum. Do the sets look low budget? Oh, most certainly. But that kind of low budget that actually works for a science fiction B-movie. And a jarring cuts from the characters delivering lines over to CGI, again, isn't a wonderful technique in most movies, but does actually deliver a functional movie in this particular genre. Most importantly of all, though, is the acting. It's, it's not great. There's plenty of stiffness and awkward delivery, but not nearly as much as I was seeing in the likes of Ape vs. Monster or Clown with a Backwards End. And it's balanced with some performances that are surprisingly well acted for an Asylum film. Line deliveries that I actually enjoyed unironically. That leaves me to wonder if the guns that make no sound were actually intentional because the editor thought the movie was coming out too good. But hey, it does have its problems. The locations are still very, very barren. The CGI is still cheap as hell, and oh god, what is wrong with the Paladin's armor? The wardrobe comes so close to actually being semi-decent, and then here comes Dan's walking in looking like a Russian trying to cosplay TV series Master Chief with a trash can. 
Then, of course, there's the constant jumping back and forth of characters who can't seem to learn, continuity problems, and Ajax's mysteriously informative coma. The writing is clearly not that great, but there's a charm to this movie. The handful of varied characters might have been simple attempts to ape off a Star Wars Battlestar Galactical-style crew without getting sued, but what you wind up with is like a party in a sci-fi tabletop RPG. I actually enjoyed hearing the lore about the Novak, and the Monotokens, and the Order of Paladins. I mean, the movie's still a haphazardly thrown together B-movie trying to make its money on its name with the content being secondary, but that content was strangely entertaining to me. Yeah, I like bad movies, and this qualifies, but it almost doesn't. Coming in at two GIANT PILES OF MAGIC SPACE CRYSTAL! Out of five. I think this is the only time I have ever watched an Asylum movie. And then checked online to see if they've made a sequel. I feel dirty. <sighs> Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, you throw enough shit at the wall and something's bound to stick. It's time to fight. 2,750. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of Novaks. All right, I got it.